Okay, and what's going on guys? It's Nate Sundarese here and welcome back to another video. For this video, we're going to be doing episode 51 of the Pokemon Violet playthrough. In the last episode, we concluded the Kita Kami side of things by taking on the Academy Ace tournament with our Kita Kami team. So that included our old and faithful Pokemon like Gilydevore, Obsidian, Unify and the rest. So, you might be wondering, why does my character look different? That's because, well, we are indeed playing Violet. This is actually my main file. Now, that might lead to another question. Why am I on my main file? The answer is simple, really. Now, this lag, I don't know how to stop it, I'm afraid. I don't know, there's something about one of these Persian... No, I don't think so. And I'd rather not waste time. So I have... I have a team member that I would like to introduce for our next adventure. But we need to wait until... Oh, never mind, we'll find out now. So we have our next member ready to hatch. And that Pokemon is, drum roll please. Yeah, I'm not gonna do a drum roll. <laughs> but yeah, our next team member is. It's Score Bunny! Yep! What kind of person would I be if I never used a Cinderace in my team? I mean, Cinderace is kind of the, the channel mascot, actually. We kind of need a Cinderace. So, anyways. Scorbunny, the rabbit Pokemon. Fire, as we know, fire energy gathers in the pads of its feet, raising it their temperature. Once hot, Scorbunny's foot pads can deal heavy damage to opponents. We're gonna name this fella because he's a guy. I mean, I mean, what other name can I give a Cinderace? It's kind of a, a channel specialty we call them Cinders. If it's a female, Cindy. But because it's a, well, he's a male, we'll call him Cinders. For those of you that don't know, Cinders is my shiny Cinderace. And here he is right here, actually. Thanks to this Dreadnought, who's being rude. Now, this episode did take a bit longer to upload, and that's because the tail map, uh, Indigo Disc is... The definition of hard core battling. I will explain more about that in later on in the video, but I want to fly to a safe spot so that I can not get into a battle again. So yeah, I want to make sure all my team members are strong, leveled up, trained, have the best possible odds really of getting through here with little to no losses and I have two Pokemon I've already caught in my main in the playthrough file remember you just hatched Cinders Jr shall we say or Cinders the second or third depending on Cinder oh it's a, it's a different Cinders anyways eh, but I can assure you there are is it three? No wait, we've caught three. We just hatched cinders there. So we've got two to catch in our next destination. And that's what this episode is going to focus on. It's going to be more about getting through the first part of the story. You know, all the dialogue you get at the start. Catching Pokemon, training them up. And I'll train them up some more in off camera so that they're ready for round for next episode so what i'm going to do is i will meet you all back when we're on our main save file and yeah there's one more thing i should mention before i actually cut here and that's in the last episode there was a cut scene that kind of played out when we tried to do the ace Academy Ace Tournament and I cut that part out 
So that I will add that on to today's video because it's actually the introduction to the Blueberry Academy before you actually go there. So what I'm going to do is I will cut the video here. I will put in the clip of the cutscene that plays there, introducing us to our new character. And then when that's all done, I will meet you back here for, well, back at the Academy for the proper introduction to episode 51. So, I will see you all soon. So, if you're watching this, this is a clip that I have added to our starting to episode 51. This is still episode 50, for those of you wondering why there's a sudden change in pace, if you will. So yeah, I was trying to get started with the Indigo, the, sorry, the Ace Academy Tournament for our Kitakami team and I walked into this, a cutscene for the Boyberry Academy. So I will add this in the middle of the, of episode 51. So yeah, we'll read this quickly and Hopefully, we don't have to go there straight away so that I can finish episode 50, but if we do, it's fine, because this is still episode 51, so let's meet this dapper looking gentleman. Hmm, who do we have here? I know I've seen your face somewhere before. Who are you again? The name's Nate Cinders. Oh, that's right, you're Nate Cinders. Yes, yes, I know you. Well then, now that you're here, let's get going. Going? Wait, I'm not done yet. Wait, wait just a moment, Director. Serrano? Yeah, Serrano, that sounds about right. Oh, hello there, Veli. You're as lively as ever, as always. Didn't realise you were here. What happened to my arm there? Did, did anyone... Yeah, look, my arm's kind of glitching. What's going on? Of course I'm here. As director of the academy, where else would I be? And do address me more properly while students are present, would you? Why is my arm twitching like that? More importantly, what are you doing out here? I thought we had agreed to meet in my office. Did we? Must have slipped my mind. Anyway, what's the... What's it matter? This is the student, right? Well, yes, he is, but... Ah, I do apologise, Master Nate Sindels. You must be terribly confused. This is Director Serrano of Blueberry Academy. As I mentioned on the phone, he is interested in accepting you as an exchange student. Yep, that's me, Director Serrano. Uh, I don't know, did I not mention that? One look at our young friend here makes me suspect you are you indeed failed to clarify that point. Speaking of which, why did you request Master Nate Sindels specifically to take part in your exchange program? Excellent question, Feli. It's very simple. You see, the reason is... Um... Why did I put in that request? Oh, that's right. The school cr trip to Kitakami. Which, at this point, I'm technically not necessarily finished. Nate Sindels met some of my students there, didn't he? You mean Kieran and Carmine? Yes, we did. Yes, yes. One of them was named Carmine, I believe. She's the one who recommended you. Oh, smashing. Now that I've gotten to meet you for myself, yeah, I've got a good feeling about you. Oh, oh, I'm glad to hear that, Director Serrano. I'd just love for you to visit my school. Would you take a breath of fresh air, so to speak? Pardon me. Well, if anything could be said about Director Serrano is that he, is, he has a keen eye for talent. I would be thrilled if you went to Blueberry Academy and got to know the students there, but only if you're willing to, of course. Think of it as a chance to further expand upon your treasure hunt. I haven't said this in a while, but 
There's that word again. I wish I could accompany Master Nate Sindles, but I'm afraid I must ask you to watch over him in my stead. You will watch over him, won't you? Oh, of course. I'd never let anything happen to one of your students. I hope this experience leads you to an even more... Leads you to even more you can treasure. Best of luck to you. Just give me a holler whenever you're ready to head to my Blueberry Academy. Well, to that I say, let's go in just a moment. There is uh, one thing I need to do first, so I will give you a holler, as you'd say, shortly. Hey everyone, we are back in the present of sorts. So, the last time you saw me technically was when I got Cinders Jr. hatched, if you will. So, yeah. The clip you just saw was actually, and I've mentioned this before, uh, taken in between recording for the previous episode. So, a lot has changed since then. First and foremost, Cinders is now a Cinder Ace, who is not healed up. There he is. So I've also got Shadow part of the team, that's my, that's what I call my competitive Umbreon. Uh, we've got Shroud, you'll remember Shroud from a while ago. Shroud has appeared in quite a few Violet episodes as a, a kind of 7th member of the team, 8th kind of, and also Power Outrage. It was a name suggestion and you might be thinking, can't I just use Unify? Well, there is one big problem why I can't use Unify and for those that you don't know, yeah, that's why. A bit too strong for what we're about to go up against. Just by level. So, Power Outrage is Diplin. All in good time. As to why. But, finally, it's time to just go to the Blueberry Academy. Yeah, so I was making sure the lag wasn't there. I heard I heard a bit of issues there with the audio, but let's try it. Are you are you all ready to kick off your studies abroad at Blueberry Academy? Just a sec. Yes, I am. Great, then let's get going. And we are off to Unova. There's the plane and there's a the Dragonite. So here we go, the hidden treasure of Area Zero, part two. The Indigo Disc. I mean, I was looking forward to the Teal Mask in general, but I was really looking forward to this. Ta-da! We're here! Yes! I know I'm in my Kizakami attire, but don't worry. That'll be fixed shortly. Welcome to my Grand Blueberry Academy. Nice Torchic. This is actually just the entrance. The school itself is mostly underwater. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Oh, and did you notice? Look at how blue this place is. I can't tell you how long I spent picking the perfect blueberry colour. Well, there's a lot of shades of blue I'm seeing here, so... Let's see, what else? Ah, uh, 
Perhaps you should have something you'd like to ask me? I butch a dino. Let's go with the... Uh, why is the rest of the school underwater? Really? That was your... That's what you're curious about? Well, it's very simple. You see, it's... Uh, it's because the school building is attached to an undersea plant that de develops nature, natural resources. Right? That's what I've heard. Yes, exactly. Right. You took the words right out of my mouth. Always on point, aren't you, Lacey? Oh no, it was nothing. Do we have a guest today? We do. Nate Sinders is here as part of the exchange program. You can feel welcome, eh? Hold on. This is the exchange student from the Paldea region? The very same. I suppose I didn't introduce myself, did I? I'm Lacey, one of the second year students here. You must really be something special, you know? It's rare for Di Director Serrano to remember the name of a new student. Well, I have a new team that's untested, but my first two teams have performed pretty well. Maybe you just heard word of mouth from them. Ha! Just call me out, why don't you? And even then, my newest team's not even fully com fully assembled yet. Actually, I've got an idea. Why don't you explain how things work around here, Lacey? You, you want me to do it? Well, yeah. You know this tour guide stuff isn't my strong suit. Well, that's certainly true, but still, I can't imagine there must be someone... I imagine there must be someone more suitable than me. You'll be fine, don't worry, just... Basically, tell us about the place in your own way, really. Oh, please don't take it like... It's not that I don't want to show you around or anything. Director Serrano has this bad habit of pushing his duties onto me, you see? And it's just not right. Really letting me have it today, aren't you? That said, this might be my chance to get to know the new students everyone's talking about before anyone else can. That decides it, I will take on this task. Excellent! Now then, let's head straight down to the, down this bridge and go to the entrance. On you go! Nice phone! Get this, that BBQ I did. Had some lovely food. Well, I say lovely food, I wouldn't know I wasn't invited. Yeah, I know that was terrible, but still. We're not supposed to know what BBQs are as of yet, so. We gotta roll with it. But look how futuristic and awesome this uh, battlefield looks. This is the entrance to Blueberry Academy, just a few feet of where we were standing before. Our school puts a great deal of emphasis on the art of Pokemon battling. We hold official matches in, on this central court right here at the entrance and any student can freely utilise this court if, it, if it's not otherwise in use. I think it's safe to say that you'll be battling more here than in any other school. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, I know, because Kitakami didn't have too many battles. It had some important battles, not counting the legendaries. There was the odd trainer battle here and there. It was just mostly Kirin and Carmine, which, speaking of, are here somewhere. Director Serrano, I think. Perhaps it's fine if you just leave the tour to me. Still, it's really relaxing here, with the sea breeze blowing over you, and even when no one is battling, you often see students lazing around in the stands. I mean, I can't say I blame them, this place looks serene. Oh, oh, oh! And there's one other quality of our school that you'll likely find very surprising. Wild Pokemon sometimes terrestrialize here. 
Really? Oh, I suppose that's not anything special to someone from Paldea. I mean, that's like going up to a Kalos trainer and saying, oh look, Mega Evolution's here. I mean, to be fair, Mega Evolution has found its way in Holland and Alola, so that's widespread as well. So I can't say terrestrializing outside of Paldea is much of a shock either. Anyways, the terrestrial phenomenon was first discovered in the Paldea region after all. Yes, I know. But we've taken things a step further than you and your terror orbs. Oh. We've developed some neat tech ourselves. Something that lets us control the terrestrial phenomenon in our own turf. I bet that piques your interest, doesn't it? Yeah, it actually does. Um, sir, I think it'll be easier to understand how all that works after we go to the lower level. If you could put a little pin in that thought. Always thinking ahead, that's our lazy. Oh, you know what? I think it'd be great if the two of you had a battle. Oh. <laughs> well, right now, you're the one that sounds flabbergasted. Why not? I'd like to see Nate, what Nate Sindel's here is capable of. Well, like I just said before, this isn't a team I've used. Hello, oh, Cinderace, Mimikyun, Absol are semi-based on my competitive team. Not completely. I want a bit of some originality for them. <laughs> and our Lacey is a member of the Elite Four and the League Club we have going here. The Elite Four. To say nothing of the influence of her father, one of the universe region's famed gym leaders. I bet you'll learn a thing or two. Well, I wish you wouldn't go spreading personal information without asking first. That's just not right. Do you also know where we saw someone with one glove? Galar. I have sorry, I've just skipped over that part. I'm sorry, but there's no negotiating with Director Serrano once he gets an idea in his head. There's no way that he'll move on with the tour until we've given him his battle. Besides, I have to admit, I'm a little excited myself for a chance to battle you. Here at Blueberry Academy, we tend to go for double battles. Just like in Pokemon Coliseum, except no shadows. Um, actually, that's a lie. Let's give one a try to get to know each other a little better. There is one shadow Pokemon here, and I'm not talking about Ghastly Honker or Gengar. <coughs> here we go with the Gen 5 music. It's Plusle and Biden! There's Shadow, our shadow Pokemon, and Cinder's. I suppose I'm representing Blueberry Academy in this battle. I'll try not to disappoint. Okay, so with these move sets, three of these moves my actual competitive Umbreon has. The only one it switched is Fake Tears with Sleep Talk. It's situational, I know, but it's effective. Now I think Plusle is the attacker and Cinder's here. Well, Here's the fun part about this Cinderace. The Cinderace was bred using cinders, like my actual Cinderace. And it's overheating. Fantastic. Anyways. <clears throat> I'm back after that. The special thing about this cinders, Cinderace was he was bred with actually using my own, like, own cinders for basically to get, like, a better cinderace, really. So this one has Libero. Yep, he's a regular fighting type, is our cinderace. Well, I say fighting type, he's a fighting type now. Now here's the beautiful part. Using Snarl in a double battle. Even Cinderace took little to no damage. Probably 
problem, isn't it? Cinderace is also paralyzed, just like uh, Shadow. So it's a this is a very competitive battle format. You do not leave anything for chance. These Pokemon are vicious. Like, these Pokemon will severely hurt you. I was kind of hoping for Cinder's to last a little longer so that I could use Low Seaf on her next Pokemon. Slowing it down and then it helps Power Outrage and uh, Shroud. But yeah, they, it, it's very competitive this. The, it's implementing strategies that you would normally see in a competitive field. And that's exactly what, what I've tried to do with my team. I've also tried to make this team kind of on the competitive field. The only problem is now is how do we get out of this one? Well, let's use Horn Claws. Mimikyu won't take a lot of damage. Alluring Voice. There's a new move. Which... Decimates per shadow. Yeah, so the special drop from Snarl isn't doing a lot because of the special increase. And there we go, another paralysis. These Pokemon are just so vicious. We might have to heal up our Pokemon. We can't lose here. We can't lose now. I mean kind of start to the Indigo Disco Dabby? We lost this early on. I mean, it shows how the battles are going to go, but that's not the point. Uh, oh yeah, I should mention this. Uh, Diplin's got a dragon type of thing. Let's take, we need to really take these two down. You're gonna use Swift. Okay. There we go. Mining is almost down. That was quite a harsh blow. Let's see. Now, how should I turn this around? Goodbye, Mining. Looks like my plus minus strategy isn't working. I guess it's time to go out with pure strength. Oh yeah, I forgot about plus and minus. No wonder they're really hurting us. Basically, plus and minus increases the special attack of a Pokemon with that ability or the opposite. So plus o has plus, obviously. Mining has minus, so they both increase their special attack stats when they're both on the field together. Uh, we did use Baby Doll Eyes and that's basically why Mimikyu has that move. For Ex Excadrill here, for example, I just don't know how we're actually to win like this. I mean, we can use Protect, guaranteeing that we'll be faster than Excadrill. And plus, we can see what they're going to do in a situation where it's one on one, two against one. So you're using a luring voice, and you're using X Scissor. Wait, I don't know how. Let's check the stats of Plusle here. No special attack up. We've got to heal up, I know it's not ideal, but we've got to... This is gonna hurt, yep.
Welcome to the Blue Bear Academy, where you can lose a battle just by looking at the Pokemon the wrong way. Normal! <laughs> Normal! Hey, we survived. But at what cost? Yep, we lost our first battle here, which... Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty annoyed about. Because I spent so long trying to get these Pokemon ready, and yeah. That's just that, that's just how the... I'm relieved I could pull off a win. It was a positively white-hot battle after all. The students here at Blueberry Academy were only recently issued terror orbs. I hope you'll be able teach us more about them. Well done to the both of you. You really battled out in blue blueberry style. Speaking of style, I forgot I had uniform for you. You'll feel like you fit right in as soon as you dress the part. Here we go. We have our new uniform with the same hairdo, which I'm going to change for the next episode. It suits you beautifully. Now that's what I call fashion. Oh, and you can take this as well. We got the Indigo style card. Similar to the Tail style card, having one of these cards increases the selection available to you in boutiques and hair salons. This should give you a few more options when you visit shops and salons in such and such in Paldea. Now that you look your part, and hopefully feel it too, why don't we head into the school? You can pick where you want to go from the gates over there. Come on, I can show you the pride of Blueberry Academy, our world fa famous terrarium. Yeah, we will shortly. I'll be back shortly when I let the switch kill cool down. And we are back. So. It's time to see what this place has to offer. Double battles, I already know. And a second Torchic in our little... Well, our little visit, really. An undersea nature park where you can learn about Pokemon as you explore its four biomes. Prepare to be amazed if you haven't seen it already. And if you have seen it again, then... Yeah, be amazed the second time, <laughs> or third, or whatever. Pardon me. So here we are. And there's a Hisuian Growlithe, and I think you may or may not recognise who it is. This is it, the park beneath the sea that has gained re renown, run, renown, I can't speak, around the world. Our very own terrarium. We may be on the water, but the project, the projectors built into the walls and ceiling make it feel like we're actually outside, don't they? We've been able to create a comfortable environment for Pokemon through technology. I designed it, all this myself, and believe me, it wasn't cheap. I can tell. Within this dome, there are four distinct biomes. Here's where we have a nice and toasty subtropical savanna biome. Then, off to your right, you can see the breezy tropical coastal biome. Further out right, to your left, you'll see the craggy, crunchy, rugged canyon biome. Crunchy, that's a word I wouldn't have used for it. But last but not least, way out in the distance, we have the arctic and snowy polar biome. Each biome's air temperature and humidity levels are regulated with the utmost care. That's why you can find completely different Pokemon species living in each area. We sure put a lot of effort into it. I bet. Tell me, Nate Sinzos, which biome tickles your fancy off the bat? I 
think when I picked this, I said bio uh, polar because that's where a certain starter is. Uh, but it might have been coastal. I'm gonna say coastal because ten because I think it's my favorite of the four. Goodness, really? It seems you and I will get all just great then. That's my favorite too. The breezy atmosphere is just so calming. If you need to heal up your team while you're down here, feel free to use the self-serve healing machines we've installed around the terrarium. Now then, Director Serrano, can you explain to us why crystals form here and how the wild Pokemon are able to terrestrialize? I... huh? But don't you already know what say that? Oh, I get it. You want me to do the talking. In that case, let me show you. The reason is actually right above our heads. That there is the terrarium core, which presides over all that happens in the terrarium. It contains a fluid that we've jam-packed full of a special material from Baldea. It's constantly emitting terrestrial energy. That's what allows Pokemon to terrestrialize in the dome. Wonderful. Well said, sir. That's exactly right. Though, I still don't know what that special material is within the terrarium core itself. It's never been shared publicly, has it? Oh ho ho. You want to know? Well, in fact, it's... It's... Oh, what was it? I plum forgotten. Briar put all of it together, so I'm not certain myself. Briar? Uh, Briar. What's wrong with me? <laughs> That's what I thought you might say. Practical battle class. It will commemorate, com commence commemory <laughs> shortly in the coastal biome. Students participating in this class should make their way to the coastal biome now. Oh, it looks like you're just in time to see a class session too. This is too good of a chance to pass up. Won't you join us, Ace Cinders? You can get your first taste of our school's classes. Sure, but I'm kind of hoping you don't drag me there right now. Teehee. I do love you see this, that sort of passion for education. I'll go ahead and register the terrarium map on your Rotom phone for you. Nice phone cover. The Terrarium map has been added to your map app. It's fun to take a stroll through the Terrarium on your own and I think I'd, I'd be more of a hassle than anything if you had me holding your hand. <coughs> Excuse me. Something in my throat there. <laughs> so yep, that solves it. Please find your way to the class site in the coastal biome on your own. Well, doesn't seem like I'm needed here. Wait, sir, you don't... But I've made sure that a dorm room has been all set up for you, Nath Cinders, so don't forget to give it a visit later. Oh, yes, and one more thing. Could you open your Pokedex app for me? The Blueberry Pokedex has been added to your Pokedex app. Catch as many Pokemon here in the terrarium as you please. Don't be afraid to go Sawsbuck Wild. It's your student life here at Blueberry Academy, so remember to live it up to the fullest. And there he goes. Well, you can at least count on me to be around when you need me, so there's no call for concern. It's probably time we both head to class. I'll be waiting for you to join us at the coastal biome. Yep, she's there now. And she's off. She That part there basically shows us which direction to go, really. You're just following where she goes. But even then, would, who really follows her? If you follow her without exploring, then that's your call. But for me... We're not going to do that. 
So I will talk to her. It's Fizzajizuro. It's Perrin again. Yep, the same one that we helped catch the. The same one who helped catch the Blood Moon Beast with us. I'm not gonna talk to her yet because that's a different can of worms altogether. Ten of worms. I say can. <laughs> right. There's a Rhyhorn and a Finamore. <clears throat> Chancy and Execute. So yeah, brand new Pokemon here, and even Doduo. So, you's probably know this by now. Oh, Muddy War, excellent. About starters. Yes, they're in here, but you have to complete certain missions to actually be able to find and catch them. And, above all else, Shiny Hunt, which reminds me, uh, I don't know if it can be started yet. Yes, there is. There is uh, mass outbreaks here too. Here's Deerling. Uh, that's where we're going with that, isn't there? And one we don't know. And a Magnemite and something else. They won't be the starters because you have to unlock them. So see, there's a Vibrava. Some more Deerling. And here's the best part about the Deerling. Each biome has its own Deerling form. We've got Spring here. Polar, I think it speaks for itself. Coastal is summer, and Craggy is autumn. So, I am not going to conduct the class today. I will do that in the next episode. If, there we go. There's a couple of Rhyhorn. A uh, Rhydon. Sword Stance. Uh, what I want to do is catch Pokemon. I will catch team members. 17 and 18, technically. Well, yeah, there's a Flygon, by the way. A Flygon. Yes, wild Flygon can not only be found here, but they can also appear in mass outbreaks. And believe me, I have been indeed tempted to do so before. Now, I'm going to battle this Chansey quickly and get some XP, because we did suffer that. That terrible defeat from uh, Lacey. And I think I know one of the big reasons why I lost. We don't have items. And I think even then it would still be difficult. Now I'm not gonna lie, I didn't remember. I didn't know you could actually. Uh, I didn't think you could actually continue on unless you actually beat her. Now you might be wondering, why have I stopped? Well, Trapinch is just... Look at it. How could you say no to Trapinch? I love Trapinch, Vibrava, and Flygon. So much so that it is joining the team. And just like in my initial playthrough of this, Trapinch will be the very first Pokemon I catch in the Terrarium. We have Trapinch, the Ant Pit Pokemon ground type, as we all know. As it digs through the sand, its giant jaws crush any rock stubs obstruct its path, it builds a funnel-shaped nest. Now, I am not great with names, so I'm going to call you Flydra. Flydra. You may not be able to fly yet, but give it time. And you might be thinking, why not catch the, fl the Flygon we saw before? See, because it's a team member, I want to train them up from scratch, you know? I want to be able to train them up and evolve them. And I think you yourselves would want to see the evolutions. Sometimes the evolutions don't always appear, and that reminds me there's something I need to address later on in the episode. But uh, yeah, oh, there's some nests and there's a volibi and a mandibuzz. 
some of, there are nests and they sometimes do have vulgabai. I've only seen vulgabai in those. I don't know if it's possible to get another Pokemon there, but you get vulgabai there anyways. But then you get it in Kizakami, so it's not like it's something you'd go out your way for compared to say Trapinch, who is... This is the first appearance of Trapinch in the game. Now it's got Arena Trap, so you can't run, so... I wasn't trying to run, I was trying to battle. So we got one more team member that we're going to catch, and I'll do that at the end of the episode. For now, I want to explore a little bit more. Uh, and fall. Here we go. That is by Brava. I don't think we're going to go into a Vulture Pinch today either. And that's not a guarantee. We might. I'll fight you, then. We'll go get our final team member. Now, considering this is a competitive team, I've got to think of my team member very effectively. It, it can't be just a Pokemon I like. It's got to be someone that can fill in the role of supporter, attacker, defender, anything. And I know what Pokemon it is because I've also used it in one of my competitive teams. Now here, I'm not going to go into much detail here because we're going to come back here at some point. But here is the central plaza. This is where it's basically like the meeting ground of sorts and also where the four biomes meet. So you can go through here and here we're in the polar biome which, yeah, as you can see here, look, there is Hisuian Quillfish. Hisuian Pokemon do indeed spawn here and as an added bonus, you also get a Lowland Sandshrew in Violet which is just fantastic but if you want to make it even more grander you also get lowland bulbix and uh, scarlet it's a version exclusive so scarlet it's lowland bulbix violet it's sandshrew and here's a grimer so you've got a lowland hisuian uh, there's not a lot of galarian galarian pokemon in general in this game i don't think so I'm trying to think. Don't th I don't remember seeing Glady in the Alps ever. Uh, Zigzag and Line aren't even in the game. Weezing. Uh, I, I think it is in the game, but I don't know about Glady. Whoops. Yeah, I'm not going to catch you, I'm afraid. We're going to explore, find the Pokemon for the final slot of our team. And don't don't worry, this Pokemon can evolve and this Pokemon will evolve. On camera, that is. Now, while we're doing that, I've got an idea. I forgot to evolve my Diglett a while ago. So, yeah. I'm sorry if you've had to wait so long for Diglett to evolve. And as for um, endure the Gravor. It's not evolved yet, but I am working towards getting that done. I say an episode or two, maybe next episode, one after, I don't know. Uh, but I'll evolve Gravor at some point. So we can fly over here, oh, jump over here. See, you've got Finny on. And Make no mistake, they are swimming. It is just a very low tide. There's a tentacool and tentacruel. Uh, you get some pretty cool Pokemon. I don't want to spoil them all. The polar biome has some really good Pokemon. Grab brawler. Uh, what's that under the tree? Flakoth. Which is in the main game, anyways. But, hey, still something there. Look at these Cottony and Whimsicott. Still Grimer? Ah, uh, I choose this big one here. 
Cottony is Pokemon number six for the team. If Cinders can take it down to a certain amount of HP and it survives. Yeah, I mean, if we use Zen Headbar, then there's gonna be. Yeah, big trouble. And someone is panicking in that bush. I'm assuming it's another one, uh, Cottony. But then, look, Whimsicott's freaking out too. So we got Cottony. The Cotton Puff Pokemon. When attacked, it escapes by shooting cotton from its body. The cotton serves as a decoy to distract the attacker. Yep. This little monster is going to be our sixth and final. Sorry, sixth, eighteenth. Sixth, stroke, eighteenth final member. And we're going to call you. Uh, I don't know what we're going to call you. I'll be back shortly when we think of a name. Yeah, we'll call you Rober. It's kind of a weird name. I suppose Will and Burr. Like Breeze, in a way, like Breeze Burr. But with a U, it makes it look a little bit more like a name. Will Burr. I will add you to the team uh, after we evolve. Diglett, who, speaking of, will give you a candy. I don't really want to. Whoops. I don't want to make the habit of using candies, but any XP that we get from battling Pokemon could be used for Wilbur and uh, Flydra. So here we go, no escape is evolving. It's Wheel Trio's cousin. Congratulations, your no escape evolved into Doug Trio. Your no escape, wow. There's no escaping the sand tomb. Okay, so there you go. No escape has evolved. And let's take Wilbur and let him join our team. I've just showed he's got a full team of boys. I didn't realize that. I just. I just caught the first Pokemon I saw, but don't worry, we'll catch other Pokemon, even if they're not going to be in the team. There's an Oddish. I do plan on catching another Pokemon. There's a Gloom. Just a moment. Okay, we are back. Okay. Okay, Cinder's on you go. So that's a rolling executor just wanted to watch. Clover sweet, I forget you get those sweets because no city is in the game. Which means you can get all creamy and it's the same of evolution method, spin about. Holding a certain sweet, and depending on the form, is how long you spend for, what direction, time of day. It's a, it's a lot to keep a tr keep track of. The way I see it, if I catch a mouse today, I'll spin around, give it a certain candy, and see what form it takes. I do actually have a competitive um, alchemy, and it's. It's sort of the rainbow swirl flavor. I'll say flavor instead of form. Rainbow swirl. Uh, yeah, I used that before in my team, and it was okay. It wasn't like the best, but it did do some. It helped a little. It was more support with my uh, 
compared to Blastoise, actually. Yeah, oh, that's a lot of Terra Shards. You get a lot of these things. So there's the class. And there's an Oracleo. You can catch those in Galar, but this is the only place we would catch them in different forms. No, that's a lie. There's also a... Uh, Kitakame, of course. Hey, Muck. Let's battle you before we end the episode. Big. Oh, what is wrong with me? Let's battle you before we end the episode. Yeah. Flydra will evolve next episode. So I think before we do anything, let's heal up. Let's at least get this spot back to us. Yes, let's, let's just get this spot here. And heal up our Pokemon. So yeah, today wasn't really going to be a, a story-driven episode. It was more about catching our team members. But next time, uh, we will evolve them both. Possibly even Flygon we'll get. But we're definitely going to evolve, get Vibrava and uh, Bunzikot. Once I figured out... Uh, move sets to make sure that I can evolve uh, Wilbur at any point. So, without further ado, and once we get this item, I shall thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, that and smashing, feel free to drop a like, drop a wee comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And if not for me, then for this dodo who is trying their absolute best to run up the hill. Also, check out my Twitter that I'm active on on a regular. It's the same name as the channel. Hey, Cinderace, the link to that is on the channel itself. And now Rhyhorn is doing it. At least Rhyhorn has a little bit of succession. Come on, Dodo, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. And now Rhyhorn's doing it. Okay. So, yeah, I will see you all next time where we will have also a new hairdo. Probably go back to what I had before, if not similar. So, yeah, see you all next time.